Hello science fans and welcome to Shiensha. Why do we go hungry? Why do we even get bored? Why did we evolve to have religion? Why is makeup part of human culture? Why are babies so cute? Why do we think that aliens exist? Why do we ask questions? The Shiensha Why series will dissect some of our most head-scratching why questions teasing out the scientific principles from historical records, conspiracy theories, and mass media. Join us in today's episode where we ask the question, Why the Forbidden? We have Tantalus stealing ambrosia and nectar from the gods, leading him to be cursed to stand in a pool of water, but never able to drink from it and quench his insatiable thirst as it drains whenever he bends down to drink. We have Eve, who snuck a bite of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil that led to her banishment from the Garden of Eden. And then there's me, with my love of the forbidden Pancit Canton, what? cursing me to a life of lost sartan and a lost skin, which begs the question, why do we desire the forbidden? We can, of course, try to answer this philosophically. You might have noticed that for some people, when something is dangerous, inaccessible, or difficult, it becomes so much more attractive. And corollarily, when that something becomes easy or guaranteed, they suddenly lose interest. This is known as the forbidden fruit effect. The forbidden fruit effect occurs in every person. It is a result of man's desire to learn about the unknown and the consequences of things that are supposed to be dangerous. The earliest depiction of this can be derived from Plato's cave as told by Socrates. Here, a group of people is described who have lived chained to the wall of a cave all of their lives. They are facing a blank wall where shadows are projected from objects passing in front of a fire behind them. The shadows are the prisoner's reality but they're not accurate representations of the real world. These shadows often drive the people to fear. And yet, a philosopher among them would question this fear, and he would be like a prisoner who is freed from the cave and comes to understand that the shadows on the wall are not reality at all. The philosopher, the one who defies fear and desires the forbidden, aims to understand and perceive the higher forms of reality as his peers would prefer to remain in the dark. We, as humans, greatly dislike prohibitions and impositions, since it makes us feel as though our freedom is threatened. This is one asset that we all see as being extremely valuable. Therefore, when something is forbidden, it immediately catches our eye and curiosity. And as children of ancient philosophers, whenever we encounter something forbidden, we suddenly feel the urge to learn more about it, explore it, understand it, maybe even eat it? Because it is in the achievement or the acquisition of the forbidden that we truly affirm our freedom. Different philosophies would of course argue differently. After all, what is forbidden is relative to each person and may change depending on our culture. So, to narrow our discussion a little bit, why is unhealthy food, a forbidden fruit all on its own, so seductive? Unhealthy food or junk food is defined as food items that have low nutritional value, typically produced in the form of packaged snacks needing little or no preparation. Or they could be any food item with excessively high salt, carbohydrate, or fat content. According to the World Health Organization, approximately 1.7 million deaths worldwide can be attributed to the consumption of unhealthy food, combined with low fruit and vegetable intake. We can see this in the fact that the recommended salt intake is less than 5 grams per person per day for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. However, data from various countries indicate that most populations are consuming 9 to 12 grams of salt per person per day. That's more than double the recommended amount. High consumption of saturated fats and trans fatty acids found in pork and beef is also linked to heart disease. 
And in the absence of comparable data on individual dietary intakes around the world, the availability of food for human consumption derived from national food balance sheets are shown in the figure below. And we can see that at least a third of the diet of many nations come from saturated fat. And this is actually aggravated by the fad of the ketogenic diet. Globally, an estimated 26% of the world's population has hypertension, and the prevalence is expected to increase to 29% by 2025, driven largely by increases in economically developing nations. 10.2% of the global population is approximated to have type 2 diabetes, and this is aggravated by the increasing levels of simple sugars in our diet. Considering the dangers of eating what is forbidden, what does science have to say about why it is so seductive? The seduction of junk food begins with cravings, and people tend to get cravings when the brain starts calling for certain foods, often processed foods that aren't considered healthy or nutritious. Even though our conscious minds are fully aware that the food that we're about to eat is unhealthy, Another part of our brain convinces us to eat it anyway. Of course, not everyone has this problem. Some have the discipline to pick and choose what they eat so that they can maintain their health. Of course, this is not just an issue of willpower or decisions. It is in fact something quite complex. The seductive power of junk food is linked to our reward system. And the reward system of our brain is composed of about 15 areas that communicate through the hormone dopamine. Dopamine is a hormone released when your brain is expecting a reward. When you come to associate a certain activity with pleasure, mere anticipation may be enough to raise dopamine levels. And the problem, or I guess the power of junk food, is how it can trigger a reward much, much more powerful than our mental reward that comes from eating healthy food. And the high levels of salt, sugar, and fat in junk food triggers a higher release of dopamine in the brain by as much as 10 times that what we can get from healthy food. And this is where the problem comes in. Because if the brain observes that it is constantly in the presence of significantly high amounts of dopamine, it starts to lessen the amounts of dopamine receptors to keep things balanced. And when there are fewer receptors, more dopamine is needed to reach the same pleasurable effect, which causes people to start eating more junk food to reach the same level of reward as before. And if there are fewer dopamine receptors, this can lead to lower dopamine activity, which can in turn make the individual more unhappy until he or she gets the next dopamine fix. And this is what we call the process of withdrawal. Cravings are key features of addiction. A craving is an emotional state characterized by a desire to consume a certain food. It should not be confused with simple hunger, which is completely different. Because you see, feelings of hunger are controlled by the hormones ghrelin and leptin. When the stomach is empty, the hormone ghrelin is produced, triggering the feeling of hunger so that the stomach can be filled. This is eventually counteracted by the hormone leptin produced by our fat cells that then make us feel full. So basically, if you have more ghrelin than leptin, you feel hungry. But if you have more leptin than ghrelin, you feel satiated. So as you can see, hunger is actually pretty useful because it ensures that you get to supply your body of its needed nutrients and water. But cravings, on the other hand, is completely different because it has nothing to do with nourishment. It is simply your brain craving more dopamine. Repeatedly giving in to cravings and eating junk food is cause for concern. For those with food addiction, these cravings can be so powerful that they cause people to break rules they set for themselves. They may repeatedly overeat despite knowing that it's causing physical harm. When acting on cravings, the brain gets a reward, which is an additional dose of dopamine. But your body gets to accumulate excess carbohydrates, fat, and salt that leads to certain diseases. 
Despite these physical consequences, we continue consuming junk food just to ensure that our brain gets the reward that it craves. And in the extreme, people with food addiction get their fix by eating a particular food until their brain has received all of the dopamine it was missing. The more often this cycle of craving and rewarding is repeated, the stronger it becomes and the greater the quantity of food that's needed each time. And this is related to the ever-decreasing number of dopamine receptors that we have due to us satisfying our cravings frequently and thus exposing our brain to high amounts of dopamine. So you'll notice that if three scoops of ice cream were enough a few years ago, now you might actually be unhappy with eight scoops of ice cream. So fueling your craving will actually keep you unsatisfied in the long run. And thus, it can be almost impossible to eat in moderation when satisfying an addiction-driven craving. Over time, food addiction can cause severe physical and psychological problems. Many people who have been struggling with food addiction for a long time keep their eating habits a secret. They may also be living with depression or anxiety, which can contribute to addiction. Unfortunately, there is no easy solution to addiction. There is no supplement, mental trick, or magical remedy. For many, it may be best to avoid trigger foods completely. But again, this is so much easier said than done. Food triggers can come out of nowhere. You can just be watching Netflix, reading a book, walking your dog, petting your cat, and then suddenly, you're craving pancit canton. Of course, it just seems that the cravings are coming from nowhere. They can be turned on by certain triggers which are known as cues, such as aroma, advertisements, and keywords from overheard conversations. Cravings can also be induced by certain emotional states, such as depression or anxiety, and this is called emotional eating. In my case, when I was young and my parents would leave me alone in the house, my sister would often make me pancit canton in order to make me feel better. And because of that, whenever I feel sad or worried about something, I often crave pancit canton. And so, science has spoken. Desiring the forbidden is linked to a philosophical condition called the forbidden fruit effect. We end up coveting what we should not because regulations against it make us feel repressed. And achieving the forbidden makes us feel that we have reclaimed our freedom. And when it comes to eating unhealthy, it is linked to the reward system of our brain. The higher carbohydrate, salt, and fat content of unhealthy food triggers a higher production of dopamine, which in turn makes us feel good. Constant binge eating would cause the dopamine receptors in our brain to go away, leading us to eat more in order to feel good. In the end, food addiction may require professional help as it is a complex interplay of altered brain chemistry that could lead to debilitating health conditions. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Y series. I hope you were able to learn something in our short discussion about the science behind why the forbidden, specifically why the forbidden food, is so seductive. If you did, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, especially for future episodes of the Y series, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much, and see you around!